drop its trailer, I was honestly so excited. They don't make a lot of movies like this nowadays. I remember 10 years ago, movies were exciting. We had disaster movies, survival movies. The audience wasn't being preached at in a weird propagandish kind of way. And you could just escape for a moment and live vicariously through the characters, just like you can do with creepypastas. Well, fall 2022 brings all that back. Really, by Flawless Films. <laughs> this movie has a very simple premise, yet it is shot so expertly. The cinematography is better than most mainstream movies in 2022. It shows you the sheer scale of people being high up, and it never lets you forget where they are. They don't have a lot of characters or convoluted plot lines. It's simple. And at the beginning, we're introduced to three characters. Dan, his wife Becky, and her best friend Hunter. These guys are climbing up the side of this sheer drop cliff face. I could never. You know, I like imagining that stuff in my mind in my parallel universes. I never would do that in real life. No, thank you. The most I'll do is belly crawl towards an edge. Something I know that's very secure if nobody else is on it. Come to think of it, I'm the same person who would go to the rooftops of the malls in New York and walk on the ledges. Yes, I was very fucking stupid. But goddamn the rush. That sickening feeling in the pit of your stomach that's like haunting you to jump. Or you feel like gravity is much stronger at the edge of the ledge. I don't know why that is. Don't worry, I do not do that anymore. Singing competition. God, you made this sad sack for Christ's sake. <laughs> Three, come on. <laughs> That's my girl. So he's a strong guy. He's very handsome. Of course, she's over the moon about it. My thing is, hmm, where's Hunter's partner? Hunter's also very fun and outgoing and loving and brave. I do like her character. But as a female, I did indeed notice this little exchange when Dan catches up to her. Oh. Taking your time there, Hatchet. We all know what this look is. Looking a little too long there, bro. Looking a little too long there, my guy. See, this is why some girls don't have girlfriends. No way too close. Some girl that wants to come over your house every single moment. No other friends, just you, and is always at your house with your husband. Kind of the reverse. Imagine your best friend, you're a guy, and your best friend's always hanging out with you, with your wife. You guys can't do anything together alone. He always has to be in the center of it, always. I get it, people need to have friends and your significant other doesn't replace all of that for you. But sometimes what usually happens, especially with extrovert couples, is that you have to be prepared to share because people have basic primal instincts. I would say the same thing if you're a guy who has a girlfriend and an older brother, especially if your older brother is a lot more outgoing and cooler than you. Don't bring your girlfriend around him all the time. People should be loyal regardless. But if you guys haven't even fully formed a bond yet and you're allowing her to straight up bond with another male, just don't be surprised if all of a sudden you come home and your brother's locked in his room with his date and you somehow can't reach your girlfriend. Anyway, I already caught caught what was going on with this. It's so freaking predictable. I really like this director because he does such a great job with the shots. Were they really doing, like, I can believe they're actually climbing this. It's, it looks like they're on there. I don't know. I know that CGI and matte painting is a thing, but I think the director had said he'd be surprised how many of the shots are actually real. Is this a set? Like, I don't know. I'm looking at this and I am legit convinced that wow, they they might actually be climbing this because there are people who make these climbs and you're looking at this climb and there's freaking nowhere to hang on. Like, what are they, spiders? Anyway, there's a hole here and you can see the mountains in the background and I immediately know what is about to happen. She's missed. <laughs> Let it go, guys. Ah! Oh! <laughs> I don't remember when I saw this movie, but I remember the first time I saw it and I was cracking up with that part, especially when they cut to the lizard laughing. Jesus Christ, stupid movie. Oh yeah, Failure to Launch. Of course I saw it because I love Matthew McConaughey, so everything Matthew McConaughey, I'll watch, as you know, you know what I mean? But I immediately thought of that. I immediately thought of that scene, and can you guess what? <laughs> can you guess what happens? So there's a grueling suspenseful moment and this movie does that so wonderfully while poor Becky is watching her husband fighting for his life to stay tethered and he doesn't stay tethered. He ends up falling. This woman is so good at acting that when her husband finally falls and she lets out that scream, that is exactly the scream that somebody would let out if they saw something horrific. Because I had a nightmare that I lost my dog in a horrible, horrible accident and I couldn't even cry. All I could do was just scream hysterically. No tears, just like a complete brain glitch. Just stuck on screaming. <laughs> 
Look at her face. It's like she actually saw it happen. It's like her brain is still trying to process what she's seeing. Her emotions have not caught up with her yet. She's an amazing actress. And the director did a great job of helping her bring this out. Becky is stuck in a horrible funk. It's been 11 months and she still has her husband's remains. She hasn't scattered them. She's drinking at bars. Her father, who is played by Negan. I know, he's Negan to me. I don't know what his actual name is. But he plays a good father role. He plays a good everything role. Who am I kidding? Anyway, he keeps calling her and asking her, look, what's going on? Please talk to me. I can't help you if you don't pick up your phone. She's just shutting out everyone that she loves. Meanwhile, Hunter has been MIA. As soon as I knew that Hunter wasn't in the picture anymore, her best friend, at which the husband was giving those googly eyes, I knew goddamn well it was because Hunter probably was also mourning, but didn't want to show her friend that she was. Because her friend would have been like, the frick are you crying like that for? Becky also does the same thing I probably would do in the situation. Just listening to the voicemail of that person over and over again. Seriously though? Whose last name is Touche? Stalking me now? No, I just don't know what else to do because you're not answering your phone. Take it. Okay. So Negan, let's just pretend, says like, look, this is unhealthy. And at first I thought he was being very un insensitive. He tells his daughter, you're not, you know, he's not this martyr that you're making him out to be. And she's upset because she's mourning. And the dad is like, you know, maybe he doesn't deserve that. I mean, the dad didn't say that. He did correct what she said. That's how she took it. But he's basically right. Which makes me think that the dad knew all this time that this guy was an asshole and he was running around on her. But the dad didn't want to tell her, I guess. Not my father. My father is the first one that would run to me and say something. No, on principle he would speak to his son-in-law first and then he would pull one of those if you don't tell her I will and you better stop the shit and get some counseling my dad's a real one he don't play around but it's kind of messed up but because I'm his daughter if I was doing it he wouldn't say shit he would say shit to me he would be like you need to stop and you need to go tell him but if I didn't tell him he, he wouldn't say jack he'd probably allude to it and be like Ahem. You need to start watching your wife. But I get where this father's coming from because probably in his mind, he's like, I don't want to make it worse. She already married him. Maybe he was already telling her before she got married to this guy, hey, this guy is not a great guy. I should know because I probably did some of the same things when I was younger than he's doing. But she wouldn't listen. You could tell that this guy also raised his daughter very well. But she's just so depressed and that's so creepy her standing there like that. Anyway, as Becky's about to overdose, she gets a call from Hunter. Hunter shows up and she's like, good grief, bro. You look awful. Becky asks her, why she came back and she kind of kind of deflects a little bit. Hunter said, your dad called me a few weeks ago and said he didn't know what else to do. Becky's upset about that, but she kind of understands and Hunter's like, look, here's this freaking tower I want to climb 2,000 feet in the air because why not? Let's just natural selection ourselves, right? Becky breaks down. She has not climbed in 11 months. She's not climbed since the incident, but Hunter encourages her and says, hey, if you don't get back on the horse, you're always going to be afraid and Dan wouldn't want that. His saying was live to die or be afraid or something. If you're scared of dying, don't be afraid to live. That's what Dan used to say. So of course, this means that she'll go with Hunter. She says, I'll go and climb your stupid stick in the air. Hunter's Reese Witherspoon looking ass is like, yay. And I can't help but love Hunter. Seriously. She really does look like Reese, Reese Witherspoon. So while they're at the diner, they make a plan. Becky's having nightmares about her husband and they leave. Hunter's a blogger, so vlogger or whatever. So she vlogs the whole thing, sort of. But she can't live stream it like she usually does because there's gonna be no signal up here. And I love how this movie Movie. Again, I know I keep saying this, but look at this. Look at the scale of the tower she shows from the ground all the way up. You can't even see it. It's past the car's threshold of the windshield. You really get a sense of scale in this movie. The director did such an amazing job at that. So they finally get to the tower. The whole time, Becky is scared and she's getting Final Destination vibes. Yes, Becky does address Hunter's chest bottom. And she's like, you know, for the views, they see some foreshadowing of vultures eating some kind of poor deer. Hunter takes a picture of it and posts it to her fiends like, I'm feeling peckish. And Becky is just like, mm. That's a very bad sign. But you know, let's ignore every single sign that we have of something being wrong. Because, you know, why not? Hunter encourages Becky. She's a great friend to have because after you have something like this happen, this is the kind of friend that will bring you out of it and will encourage you. And Hunter's just so adorable. You can't help but not be mad at her. Even though I know for certain, like this, they gave it right away that she slept with a girl's husband. It's like, really, bitch? Like, but she's the kind of girl that she's so adorable that you wouldn't mind sharing. Not me, not me me personally, but I can understand it. It's annoying. See, the, see, this person watched Final Destination. I'm convinced that they watched Final Destination or they're 
inspired by that or something because all the shots of this thing being rickety as F and just shaking back and forth, not to mention something happens. And when it does, this is the moment where I would have been like, okay, if I wasn't feeling uneasy before, I sure as shouldn't feel uneasy now. This is a sign we need to go back. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, the ladder's falling apart. One just straight up falls off. Let's just keep climbing this rusty ass shit that's clearly not kept. Let's do that. Let's, 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 yes, why not? I mean, come on, Becky. That's a, that's a sign number three. She just keeps ignoring all the freaking signs. You're still low enough on the tower that you could go back down. Like, okay, that, they're still pretty high up. Like, they're already high up. Okay. That's still freaking creepy. Again, we see the scale of the tower, and this is only a small section of it. I love the shots that are being used in this. Also, the bag that they carry with them is very important because it has the water and the drone in it. You can't even see people on the ground. Birds are making their nests up here. You are now ascending into heaven, but they're already almost at the top, so might as well. <sighs> Mind you, she did this right after Hunter told her not to look down. Why do we do that? They get to a weird, <laughs> weird dip where they have to do some shimmy around it. And this is where things get even more scary. The wind is just buffeting them up here. And as she holds on, there are some screws that legit just fall off. She hears them fall off. She hears this clanking and she's like, uh, what the hell was that? You know, because honestly, if I'm climbing up a ladder and I hear a screw falling off, I'm going to be concerned. And you don't know it's a screw, but all you know is you're climbing a metal object and you hear a piece of a metal object falling off. Off. Bitch, I would have been, I don't care that I'm almost at the top. I would have been down that thing so fast. So they do get to the top and Hunter takes her a drone shot of them being on top of the tower. See, they're actually feeling good. And then Hunter has to bring in another and she, she has to bring in, she has to take the extra mile. She's like, look, let me hang from it and then show me. Yeah, I'm living boy. Yeah, one hand, bitch. What the hell is the matter with people? Seriously, like, I get it, but like, really, bro? Fe people have fear responses for a reason. She's making my nose clog up. I could never be friends with someone like this. This is the kind of person that would get you killed. Yeah, bitch, look. Now watch me ride a dragon sausage on the side of this tower, holding on with only my toe. Will you film it? Put it on the P-Hub, you know what I mean? What's sad is that most people probably see her post and be like, oh, that was fake. Unless she drops to her death, and then they'll be like, oh, shit, that was real. No. The old Becky would have done it. Bitch, I'm not the old Becky. Stop trying to get me to hang off the side of a power, a, a, the freaking tower that's rickety. Oh, what are you doing? This is why being friends with someone like this is dangerous. Unless you're into that kind of thing too. You will freaking die and they will boohoo over you for about a month and continue on with their adventures. They throw away life. And to fully trust someone. I mean, Hunter is freaking strong, but the only thing Becky is hanging on to is her freaking hand. This, this woman could just let you go and be like, whoops. My hands were sweaty. I don't know what happened. Oh, bitch, no. Okay. So, you know, this is the anxiety part for me that I think is what they were going for in this movie. Look at their background. Look at their background. They look like they're a needle thumbtack on the map of Texas. It looks so, no. I am happy. My introverted ass will be like, no. Okay, that sounded awful. Introverted ass. The ass is not introverted. Myself. Shut up. Could not be doing this. And if I'm going to do this stuff, I'm doing it on my own. I am not trusting someone that much to hold on to me while also having their phone selfieing. Like, are you kidding me? And they do it for so long. Anyways, Hunter can be trusted. Good, good thing, right? Becky's happy, but she's like, all right, let's go back down now because uh, I need to shit. And she lets go of Dan's ashes. Good thing it didn't fly back into their mouth. Time we gave our dad a peaceful send off. Now you've tasted your dad. Oh, stop it. There were so many signs leading up to this. Here's another one. When they were on their way to the tower. But don't worry, Becky, see, because you are safe. Ah! Oh, <laughs> Bitch, why are you crying? I think this whole time Becky actually knew, but she didn't want to admit it because, you know, love is blind and people would rather be lied to than hear the truth. I don't know why that's a thing. It's the way Becky turns and looks at her. <laughs> it's like she's not even crying as hard as her best friend's crying. She's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Okay, something I should know, especially considering Hunter's not the kind of person who just cries like that. 
Yeah, uh-huh, sure. Did you like what? This is such predatory behavior. Your friend loves you and looks up to you and you do that to her. That's kind of messed up. So they start their descent back down. And of course, because there's a screw loose in their heads and on the ladder, you can guess. This is the start of their horrible, grueling survival story. <laughs> So yeah, um, the ladder starts falling off and this girl is like, I'm going to freaking die. Hanging on by a thread as the ladder falls to pieces. I have to admit, Hunter is very strong. She's able to pull Becky back up. Yo, if her foot slips and that like bangs into her crotch, that would be painful. Not as painful as it would be to guys, but it's still pretty painful. You know, lips have feelings too. Anyway, they're okay, but now they have a problem. Now they are stuck up a 2000 foot tower with no way down unless they decide to jump it. Just look at the scale here. This is amazing. Wow. This is freaking amazing how they've shot this. I mean, if there was ever a way to go and you wanted to make sure you were dead dead while pretending that you're flying momentarily, this would be it. I'm surprised more people don't use this as the, you know, suicide tower and jump off and end all their troubles. Pretty sure Becky is rethinking her decision to come on this trip. You were getting signs, bro. You were getting signs all along the way and you ignored every single one of them. Not to mention, poor Becky has a nasty cut on her thigh. Hunter takes care of her as she always does and ties a tourniquet. What are they gonna do? They vlog for a little bit just to pass the time. I am so sorry. I don't care like how relaxed you feel. Guess who would not be dangling their legs off the edge? No, sir. Not me. Hunter is always laughing and making everyone laugh, but she gives some deep saying about how you should live and yada yada. And Becky's like, why don't you ever show your viewers this side of you? This is some really metaphysical stuff here, like you should share this with people, encourage them. So they have a few situations, right? To see if anyone's around. Hunter says, look, we don't get service up here, but at some point down the tower, we got service. If we can get the phone down that part, we'll be fine. Okay. Help us stuck on B67 tower. So since they can't call 911 up there and they can't like set their phone to call 911, they make a message and then if they put it into a place where it can be sent, then it will be sent as soon as it gets a signal. They lower the phone, but they don't hear anything. Unfortunately, it needs to be lower. So to get it lower, Hunter has to climb down there. Their bag is also down there as well with all the water. Hunter hangs with all her strength and she is freaking strong. Cause I guess you have to be if you're a mountain climber. I will admit my scrawny ass fingers are not that strong. My ass would have slipped as soon as I put my hand on there. When I used to climb up walls and trees, my fingers were much stronger. If you don't use it, you do lose it. Which explains why Becky is out of practice having not climbed for 11 months. Fingers have muscles too. Hunter can't get low enough. So they decide to put Hunter's phone inside of her shoe and pat it. She uses her push-up bra as well. And they do this amazing shot of them dropping her converse how this is so freaking cool okay so is this like a looped video i think it is but it's done so well man this director is a freaking god the shoe drops and it is so far down you can't even see it wow it becomes a literal pinprick as they look through the binoculars. Phone is probably like smashed to smithereens. You know, if it was one of those old Nokia things, you could have dropped it without any padding and it would be fine. No, nope, but nowadays we have phones made out of literal glass. Seemingly, it might not have worked. It might have worked. They don't know. But with all of Hunter's followers, if the message had gone through, at least one of them would have alerted the authorities and somebody would have come to get them. But that doesn't happen. As Hunter is looking for something, well, what does Becky see? One, four, three. The look on Becky's face looks very displeased. It has something to do with her husband. I'm guessing it's some kind of code they had or something. There's a guy with his dog down there. And this guy, he looks so familiar, by the way. His dog is trying to tell him, hey, I hear something. But he calls his dog away. Becky throws her shoe. And when the shoe lands on the ground, the guy does seem to hear something. The dog comes back and the guy's looking around. He picks up the shoe. But he's not expecting human beings to be at the top of a 2,000 foot freaking tower that's ascending into the heavens because he knows that people aren't that insane. He walks away. Every time they think people would help them, nothing works. Becky starts to realize things she has not realized before because she was so needy in this guy's mouth. For example, at her wedding or celebration with her and her husband, her best friend looking awfully sad, who should be the one laughing the most. They shoot the flare that they found at the box of the tower, and it's that same guy. He's with his partner. They pull up with their RV, and you think they're gonna be helped, but no, they just steal their truck because 
because people are freaking insane. They're gonna leave two people up there in the tower to starve or to die and take their truck. I would say this is unrealistic, but in Philadelphia, this literally happens. Having to sleep out here in the cold on top of this place is just as bad as sleeping out in the daytime. Becky's cut is starting to smell really bad. And then under the red lighting, she confronts her friend about having an affair with her husband. Nothing like sorting out your drama than being stuck atop a 2,000 foot skinny tower with no way down. Perfect time to find out. Dan could never say the words I love you. One, four, three. One, four, three. Mistake. I'm sorry. I am so, so sorry. For sleeping with my husband or me finding out about it. For she begins to tell her friend, okay, she's being honest, but she begins telling her friend he was so amazing and lovely. And you gotta hear some of what she says because it's freaking hilarious. At that point, I'm like, bitch, um, maybe you should remember that you're at the top of a tower, you know, where this person whose husband you slept with can easily push you off and just say you've slipped because there's like no way to prove otherwise. Like I would never do that to my family members, but nowadays you don't know people. Some people are insane. And for someone who's been kind of insane for the better part of almost a year, who was just wrought with grief, probably, I mean, probably not a time to gloat about it. She wasn't gloating, but she kind of was. I respect her for not denying it because there's nothing to deny at this point. She even tried to take back her phone because there was a segment of the movie where you saw someone's hand on her when she was away in vacation and the person had dark skin so obviously unless her friend is into dark dudes as well which she probably is the chances that it's someone of the same exact complexion and she never told Becky about it are very slim the only reason your best friend wouldn't tell you about the guy that she's with is if it's your guy in love with the same guy? You're saying that as if you both laid eyes on him at the same time. Bitch, she fell in love with him first and was married to him first. What the hell? The guy's an asshole, but you're also the bigger asshole because this is your best friend. Okay, things happen, but in that situation, if you love your friend as much as you say you do, remove yourself from the situation. I tried so hard not to, but I fell for him. I mean, he listened to me. He was... He was just different than every other douchebag that I'd ever dated and... Yeah, probably because he belonged to your best friend. And because your best friend was dating him at the time, you freaking sleazebag. There are legitimately some dudes and girls who will specifically go after people because their friends have them. Ugh, in that moment, it's just like, ooh, she's so disgusting. But I get their relationship we're like sisters, so it's like you have to depend on this person. And I had never felt that way before. And then you asked me to be your maid of honor and it all hit me like a ton of bricks how messed up this all was. I loved him, but, but I love you more, so I ended it. So they were still dating though. She made it seem like she did such a great job when she was with this guy and broke up with him when they were gonna get married, which I think is also a lie. I think some shit also went down after. But let's not pretend that you weren't dating him for half a year while your best friend had already been dating him and knew him before you did. Kinda slazy. I really thought Becky was gonna push her off. And now you hate me and I don't blame you and now we're stuck on this stupid freaking tower in the middle of freaking nowhere. It sounded like she wanted to say the more colorful F word, if you know what I mean. But family friendly disaster movies are the way to go. Poor Becky, she can't catch a break. So she's like, you know what? This is a good thing because now I can get over his ass. Anyway, the two make up and here comes the part of this movie that absolutely gets my whiskers in a twist. I love this movie. I think this movie is freaking amazing. I think it's one of the best movies I've seen in a long while. Yeah, but this part, oh my God, what were they thinking? What was the writing in this part? This is the only part of the movie that I have the biggest qualm with. So they're saying, you know what? Our water is just down there. We might die of thirst because our water's in that bag. Hunter's like, we could use your phone. Becky's like, uh, no, we can't because people, no one's been here. So either the 60,000 followers you have don't care or your phone's in a million pieces. So which means it didn't work. Her phone died, didn't have enough padding. Hunter says she can get it. The rope's long enough. The bag is right down there. Becky even mentioned that the drone is in the bag. Becky gives Hunter the idea that if they get the drone, they can fly it to the motel with a note attached to it saying for them to get help. So Hunter has the idea to go down. She says, I can do it. She ties the rope to the pole. I want you to look at something. She ties the rope to the pole. Okay, she ties the rope to the smooth pole, right? Okay, Hunter shimmies down. Besides, maybe you'll get lucky and I'll fall. Really, bitch? 
Why would you say something like that? Like, I don't care how mad I am at you. If we're like sisters or we're best friends, don't say some shit like that right before you're about to die so that if you die, it makes me feel guilty for the rest of my life. Ew. But I like how Becky just never said anything. She says that and Becky's just looking at her like... You want me to say no? I don't want that to happen. Okay, hold your breath. Damn, Becky. Becky's savage, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bex. I love you. I really do believe when Hunter said that, that she actually does love Becky. Like, I don't think she went out of her way to hurt her best friend. Still a sleazy thing you did, and if you really loved someone, you would have put your feelings aside. You know, imagine if you had kids. It would be pretty easy, knowing that you love them, to deny yourself of certain things for their survival. You should have been able to do that for the sake of your best friend, but whatever. Some people have shallow love. But still, I believe when Becky says it, and I don't want anything to happen to her. We don't really get a lot about these characters, but we have more character development in this very simple, format movie than we do in most mainstream media, which is kind of shameful, but good on this director for sticking to what has always worked. Hunter is lowered down, and oh my god, anxiety. She gets down to the two th th things, and she has to unclip herself to get to it. Only on by one hand, it doesn't make any sense. She can't reach, so the only way she can do this is to Spider-Man her way onto these horns, or if that's what they're called. Now, there's so many things, like I said, this is the part about this movie that drives me insane. So you saw when she tied the- Oh, sorry. Mm. You saw when she tied the rope, the carabiner, to that smooth pole, right? Right? Okay. <sighs> okay, so she gets to the bag. Everything's in there. She's like, all right, I can get back up. Takes the bag. Becky's like, how are you gonna get back up? She can't reach over there. I don't know. These girls were so smart up until this point. I get that dehydration and malnutrition is a thing, but you guys have been doing so well and you were able to think through everything before. So please tell me kindly what was going through the mind of the writers or directors or whatever. No offense, but le legitimately I have to ask you this. What happened with the board of people who were supposed to be editing this and saying, hey, this is the con continuity era uh, error where it comes to their, their freaking intelligence. Why not? Why doesn't Becky, you know, move the rope over? <laughs> Just... <laughs> This part is so confusing to me. You have this girl, Hunter, straining to get back up. Okay, let's say Becky is not in the mindset to think about moving the rope over. Hunter's not attached to it. There's no weight on it, so there's nothing keeping it taut. There's nothing on it. It's literally a light rope hanging down over the side. Why don't you fucking move it? Why don't you move it over? What the hell? J just, just, just. She ties it. Look, look at what she's doing. Look, look, the rope is not set in place. Look. You can, that rope can slide, you can slide it. You can slide the rope. You can even loosen it. And let's say it's too tight or something. You can loosen it up and slide it over to where you need it to be. So why? Why on God's green earth do we have this scene of Hunter trying to reach the rope? Bitch. Sorry, but bro, really, bro? Take the rope, Becky. Hunter, somebody say something. Take the rope, slide it over here, and you can reach it. What in the ass? What in the freaking open ass? What was this? What? What happened here? I was freaking screaming watching this because it freaking makes no sense. I don't understand why the characters have all of a sudden become so brain dead. They thought about this. They, it's not like they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. They're completely lucid right now. They're going off their reserves. They're not at that point where they can't think. That's how they concocted this plan in the first place. You concocting a plan of how to pad your phone and then your 60 followers, 60,000 followers, and using the drone and flying it, but you cannot do a simple, Sh moving the rope over 12 inches so your friend can get it? What the fuck? Oh my god. I have never, I have never felt this frustratingly angry at a movie before. <sighs> if you have high blood pressure, do not watch this movie. Seriously. Seriously. 
because I feel like people like that would die. I just don't understand. I don't understand. And then the stupidity continues, by the way. Bitch is up there and does not move. Look, you can move the rope. You can move the rope. It's right there. It's right next to you. It's right next to you. It's right next to you. The rope is right next to you. You're a mountain climber. You've done the same thing. It's a rope. You don't need to know how to climb mountains and climb cliff faces to know how to move a rope around a pole so that it can hang directly over what you want it to reach. Holy shit bag. Oh my God. And then this idiot. Okay. At first I was like, why is she putting putting the selfie stick on the bag. Okay, she wants to reach it, fair enough. By the way, whatever brand of selfie stick that is, is really freaking powerful. I would like to know what brand of selfie stick is, is something that you could put a, a book bag on and then put all your weight on and hang from it while you're climbing up it. I would like to know, because that's, that's legitimately more interesting than what happened in the scene. There are better ways to write drama. But anyway, she holds out the selfie stick to reach the rope. The rope, by the way, which your friend could have just moved over, moved over to her right, and to this girl's left, only a few, fr even if you've moved it a few, a few inches, like six inches. J I, I d God, almighty, wow. Like no matter which way I try to reason or come up with the logic of what the writers were thinking about when they made this, I can't, I just keep coming up empty. I just keep being like, well, maybe they need to write something for drama. You were doing so well, what, what happened? I'm legitimately flabbergasted. Anyway, they don't do that because they're freaking idiots. And then she does this thing where she hooks the bag on with the selfie stick. And then she jumps to get the bag. Th this is this is what I'm talking about with mainstream, like this is not even mainstream, but like movies just concocting the stupidest way to elicit fear or drama when you didn't depend on that for the better half of this movie and all of a sudden it's like I can't have there's no words but anyway Hunter decides to jump and get the bag by the way this is stupid because oh god I'm gonna go insane I don't even understand this but there's important things in that bag if that selfie stick fails or pops off or something there goes everything that Becky up there needs to survive. Hunter drops, she dies, the water dies with her, the drone dies with her. I mean, really bro? Didn't make sense for you to pull the bag up before Hunter goes on it? Pull the bag up. Let's say she needs the extra girth for her to grab onto. Okay, common sense. Pull the bag up. It's light, you can do that. Take the important stuff out of the bag, hook the bag back on, and, and lower it back on so Hunter can jump on it. Or take off your clothes if you want something that Hunter can like sit on or grab onto, besides just the empty bag, take off all your clothes. Even if you just have the bag by itself. Anything would have been a better idea than leaving the bag on and then jumping on the bag with all the important stuff in there. By the way, which gives you additional weight that you have to pull up, which puts you at higher risk of falling or something snapping. But all of a sudden, nobody can think. So Hunter hops on to the bag and starts climbing up as her friend is trying to pull up as well. God, it makes me so mad. There is such good use of tension here and Hunter is almost there. Can you guess what happens? Hunter slips, which causes her to let go of the rope. Does she catch it? <laughs> Becky scarily looks over the edge to see if her friend made it. She's terrified. She already lost her husband like this and now her best friend. But as she looks over the edge, Hunter is okay. Yay, Hunter grabbed the bag because of course she did. But she says she really hurt her hands, which makes no sense because she wasn't hanging on to the rope, but maybe she did and she slid all the way down. And so Becky pulls her friend up. Hunter's okay. They have the water. And when Becky offers Hunter some, she says but we should ration it because we don't know how long we're going to be up here. After all, Hunter did drink water early on anyway. Way. When Hunter had gone down to get the bag in the first place, that's the first thing she did. She took a big swig of water. Becky's just so happy she's alive. So Hunter says she has eyeliner in her bag and they can use it for a note. I love how Hunter is always charming and quirky during this whole thing, even though she's terrified as well. They send the drone out, but it has to come back because the battery's low. In the night, Becky has a horrible dream. She wakes up all alone and there are vultures all over the place feeding on something. When she looks to see what they're feeding on, all of a sudden Hunter is there. Her dead body is being feasted on by the vultures. When she wakes up, Hunter reassures her and tells her it was just a bad dream. In the morning, Becky says, you know that light that's always blinking on the tower? We can charge the drone in there. Because earlier when they were in the cafe, Hunter had shown her a little trick on how to charge your phone in the lightning or the light plug or whatever it was. Pretty sure it's pretty dangerous. By the way, here's a scene I was talking about when they were in the car and there was somebody's black hand on her shoulder, person that Hunter did not tell Becky about. And this was her deflecting it at the time. I don't know. It's an oldie. Who is it? Now 
buddy. Just give me Andrew has a boyfriend. It's nothing. Just some guy. Oh, that some guy sure knew how to tickle your whistle. <laughs> Uh-huh, it sure is. <laughs> you would know. Anyway, that morning, Becky climbs up with the bag as Hunter cheers her on and starts singing. She opens a light bulb and she charges the drone. I legitimately want to try this without getting electrocuted. My partner claims it's really dangerous and you could really hurt yourself if you touch the insides. But I mean, if you don't touch the insides, is it a way to charge your phone though? Life or death in this situation though, right? Life or death. It's not deep enough, so Becky has to use the ring for a tether. But she has to remain in this position for about half an hour. Unfortunately, since her leg is smelling like dead meat, she starts attracting the vultures. This is the part that was awkward for me. She gets attacked by the vultures and the bag drops and Hunter just watches it fall. Interesting. Long before this point, my partner was like, wouldn't it be evil if they did a twist? And wouldn't it be evil if Hunter was dead all along? Or something of the sort? And I was thinking to myself, man, that would be a good idea. Because right around this time, she doesn't catch the bag. She doesn't really interact much. It's pretty weird. We've watched enough horror movies and other movies similar to this to know that's how people actually operate. Especially when there's a near-death experience. These cinematic establishing shots are freaking awesome. So Becky asks her, why didn't you catch the bag? Hunter does not reply and that's what I'm just like huh weird why are you not saying anything why didn't you catch the back um <laughs> that's, that's the answer you give? Really? Because there's really no explanation. She didn't even try to catch it. So right around this time, Bex is reminiscing about her and her husband. Father always had that Negan look of unapproval, like disapproval, whatever. And she tells Hunter he was trying to tell me. She says, you know what? We have one more shot at this. Let's fly the drone to the hotel. <laughs> I felt my stomach drop when I saw that scene. Seriously, the way that they put this together, this is really a movie that is just, uh, it mills up your hope as a person watching it and then it just dashes your hope on the rocks. Cause at this point you're like, oh God, what now? Someone comes out to check on his truck but he's not expecting a drone to be flying in the desert. Now they're stuck up there. A storm is coming. And Bex is like, Neil, we can try this again. Give me your shoe. I'll pat it out better this time. Give me your shoe. Holy shit. <laughs> this is the part where I'm like, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. For anybody who's not like an aficionado when it comes to these kinds of things, you probably would never see this coming. But we had a feeling it was coming and I just knew when she started talking like that, this is exactly where it's going. It's not up here. It's on your foot though. Oh no! What is happening? Are we about to get the M. Night Shyamalan resistance? Would you stop talking like a meth head taking it up the ass? Okay, so she couldn't have the shoe because she didn't catch the bag and she bled out. She's looking in the direction of the rope. Where's the rope? Isn't the rope supposed to be hanging down? What happened? Did they forget? They forgot. Where's the rope in the bag, bro? It's right there. Like, what? she didn't catch it, so it's supposed to be hanging. And look, it's hanging, but then you look over this shot, no rope. I guess they tried to move it to the side so they can get the shot, but it just ended up looking very weird. Like, where's the bag? Clearly, the rope is still seen here over the edge, but it's just not dangling anymore, which makes no sense. This was a very interesting twist. Hunter died, and she bled out, having fallen. And the nightmare that Beth was having of the vultures eating her was actually something that was happening but they were eating her friend's body right below her so ghost hunter is like you didn't think your scrawny ass could pull me up here by yourself did you i don't know or rather hunter says that people do some strange things when they're adrenaline pumped so hunter says yeah so you just didn't want to face the fact that you were up here all by yourself all alone you're the one who pulled the bag up you're the one who was driving the drone and that explains why hunter just watched as the bag fell past her and didn't catch it it explains why beck is the one who drove or, or flew the drone and why her mind came up with a reason why Hunter wouldn't be able to do half those things because her hands were ruined. When in fact, Hunter would have wrapped her hands and helped anyway. She is indeed all alone. She records a message for her dad saying how sorry she was and she should have listened to him. Her dad has always been trying to reach her and he's really a kick-ass dad. But he gets worried when he tries to send a message and it says not delivered. Did she not tell anyone where she was going? Like, you know, isn't that like survival 101 right here? In the morning, Eck remembers what Hunter had said about needing to eat. A vulture lands and starts 
starts feeding off her leg. It's survival of the fittest, and as Bex allows the vulture to eat from her, she grabs it by the neck and starts eating it. She now has her will to live again. She decides to go down, and she's like, I got an idea. And the music that plays in this segment while she is climbing again or repelling, knowing that she just has a completely different confidence about her, wanting to live, aside from the little timid and defeated person that she was, made me cry. She goes down to where Hunter is, and when she lands right next to the vulture, he's like, the fuck? And he looks at her like, where did you come from? Humans can't fly. I don't mean, I don't know how this one got up here, but um, oh, it's you. And she's like, yeah, it is me. The bitch who ate your friend. And now I'm here. What's up? That's freaking creepy. You know how scared this bird must be? He's like terrified. He's like, okay, I don't want no smoke. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> because you're a freaking killer. Beth is so sorry and she hugs Hunter's hand and tells her, look, I gotta make sure this message goes through. So she sends a text to her dad and she stuffs it inside of the wound that was opened by the vultures on Hunter's belly. Puts it in Hunter's shoe and stuffs the shoe inside Hunter's stomach and pushes her off the tower. Becky just tries to survive and avoid falling. Her dad has gotten the message and is flying as fast as he can to the area. It seriously made me tear up when I saw saw the helicopters and all the cop cars, knowing that she had help. And he almost starts crying when he sees a body bag, but he hears his daughter's voice and she hugs him. And this just, this made me cry, man. This made me cry. You're legitimately, you care about the characters. You care about what happens to them. Even despite what Hunter did, I still care about Hunter. I didn't want her to die. I didn't want Becky to die either with everything she's gone through. Her dad is such an awesome parent. He said, I just want you to be okay. The movie ends with Becky releasing that uh, very humbly inspiring speech that Hunter gave to her. And so Hunter is basically living on in that word in what she has left online and in her friend Becky, who she literally sacrificed herself to save. This movie was so top tier. Wow, it feels like... I don't know who the director is. I'm not aware of anything that Scott Mann has done if I've watched it, but this movie was one of the best I've seen. Best movies I've seen to the point where I'd want to watch it over and over again. It had such a simple premise. And you know, with all those Descent movies and Cave movies, this was so much simpler than that and felt like so much more enrichment because of how it was filmed, because of the dialogue, because of the use of suspense, the shots. I mean, it, it just threw me for a loop. I liked it better than I thought I would. Thank you so much for making this. You guys haven't seen it. This is definitely a movie you want to watch with your family. It is amazing, amazing movie. Wonderfully, wonderfully shot, wonderfully written, except for that dumbass part that I talked about where she could have moved the rope over. Jesus Christ. But you know what? This is one of the things I'm talking about. How a movie, the general feel of a movie, if it's good and the story is good, you can overlook certain things. That part was really annoying, but yet it didn't kill the movie for me because the majority of the movie was still amazing to watch. That's how you do it. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.